but I've been getting into more projects on the ship, and uh, we do a lot of uh, project integration. I uh, led uh, installation of the traction winch that we use in the hold. Uh, one of the projects helped get that yellow crane on the deck, uh, integrate science equipment. They're bringing on bigger stuff, and we do some engineering and and support for uh, OET and Nautilus that way as well. So pretty diverse and fun. And Get to do lots of different things. Uh, science, Steve. That sponge. I don't think I've seen that one before. Yeah, we saw a couple of them. Um, it's a hyal uh, matted okay. sponge. Uh, it's a small bathy bathy going over yeah. there. Yeah, I see it. That's, it was really neat, like tulip shaped. Yeah. I So we see Go those a lot. Um, that family has some really iconic looking sponges that I'm more familiar with from the Atlantic. And uh, there's a really cool one that kind of looks exactly like a toasted marshmallow. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah that, so, it's, uh, its stalk is so fine. Yeah. Yeah, they, they can be like bundles of fibers or they can be, you know, that kind of a thin, branchy um, stalk. Uh, yeah. Iconic kind of morphology. Yeah. What are you? Go for Zoom. Sponge Not and a little maybe. mucus house. I think it's an old barnacle, actually. That oh, just really? Up. Or it could be a sponge. Neat. Okay. Yeah. It does look like it has like a little opening. Yeah, on like top a barnacle it. shape. Yeah. Although um, we did see that a, a lot of the barnacle plates right now, tend to fall apart you on the cliff over time, and, and they yeah, collect in these patches on the then seafloor. Then ten meters from the wall now. Okay. Very strange. Um, we called them crusty flakes last cruise because <laughs> uh, they were um, iron manganese coated flakes. Part of a balanced breakfast. Give me a little more iris on Argus, please. Thanks. Yeah, I let myself get wander down the wander down slope from Argus. Yeah, no, I think we're good. But, uh, but I don't want to kind of break 10 meters from the wall kind of thing. Yeah, I agree completely. Just let me know if you want it, me to really open up and no, I think see we're good. surrounded. I can see with the sonar. Cool, cool. I think we're good. I, uh, very fortunate to have the Telestrator back here, but it's, it's kind of a uh, a bit of a crutch to look at the Telestrator, even though it has a little bit of you know, video lag, uh, but it starts to give you a headache after a while, so I have to remind myself to look up the big screens. It gives you a he Why does it give you a headache? It, it has a, there's a tiny little bit of video lag okay. in the Telestrator that's different from the... Um, from everything, from the motion of the ship, which is different from the motion yeah. of the monitors, which is... Yeah, which are each different from each other. That's interesting. Yeah, it's not quite uh, fluid. Not sure what. I mean, it was like that last year too, so I didn't expect it to be fixable. But, so the monitor and the big, the big monitor in the top right has a feed from the telestrator. So yeah. That. Huh. Does, do you not see the lag there? Yeah. No. It. It. If you if you sit here and watch it, it kind of has a little bit of a. A lag to it. Interesting. We're also s streaming the Telestrator. Yep. Over. Channel yeah, that one. that looks fine up in the camera. We got some uh, another species here. This uh, kind of sparsely branched one is called Norella macrocalyx. Um, actually, one pretty iconic for these depths. Characteristic of these depths. Uh, it has very large polyps, Zoom. so it tends to 
feel very. Um, yeah, there we go. Tends to look and feel very uh, fuzzy from a distance, but typically it has very very few branches and it branches very low on the colony. Um, this is one we saw quite a bit on our previous cruise as well as uh, on this one. Okay, and we know it so well that we really never have to sample it anymore. Yeah, you were able to ID that from pretty far back. Yep. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. we've it seen just it. It looked like every primnoid to me. <laughs> <laughs> it has a fairly wide distribution. It was originally described, I think, from around Hawaii uh, back in, I want to say 2006 or 2010. I can't remember. Um, it's been a while. But uh, yeah, the, you can find that as, you know, as far south as Hawaiian Islands. The, yeah, the, the name is kind of descriptive of the colony as well, Macrocalyx. Um, gives, it, gives you an idea of how large those polyps actually are. Macro. Oftentimes several millimeters in height. <laughs> gives it a certain um, texture when you view it from a distance. So if you're just joining us, we are kind of lateraling along around 3,000 meters around the isobath, tracking around uh, this seamount, uh, a, a smaller knoll of this seamount, in fact, part of a, a ridge on the western side, southwestern side. It's a cool Argus shot right now. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that is oh, cool. Oh, yeah, great shot. Sort of a change of aspect here a little bit. That's all right, yeah, just follow the contours. You don't have to head for that waypoint. I want to keep the seafloor in sight. But we're, we've lost the nodules here. It's actually gotten a bit steeper. Um, lost the nodules and kind of have this more just mm. boulder. I'm just going to come pillow up basalt. and forward and get myself just straight up upslope of Argus now. Sure. OK. Not not so, not such a gentle slope. It seems like anymore. Kind of want a more like, conventional Could we layout. Change the range on the Argus sonar to ten meters. Just on that little, yeah. right there. That yeah, uh, Gabby will get it. Yeah, it's on that little side there. Gotta make sure I got the right one. Head two. No, head one. There we go. Right, thank you. Yeah, these rocks are looking quite different. Oh, that Argus view is getting cooler. Wow. You can really see how steep it is there. Yeah, really so nice lighting on the downside. So now that it's getting super, Josh, I'd love to do the 20 meter Argus off. I don't know if you feel differently. Uh, you want to put Argus 20 meters off? Isn't, uh, or shoot for it at least. I mean, we only have a 30 meter tether, I guess. I don't yeah. know. What do you think? Uh, I think we're okay with 10 meter. Like, we're right at 10 meters right now. Okay. So, you know, our escape is always up the hill. Yeah, totally. So, if you're feeling... Oh, we need I, to get out of this spot. Then we can always just, if you travel up, I'll just come up. And, yeah. Yeah. So that's 15 now, actually. Yeah, because I just came up. Yeah. There's an ac acrobatic snail. I was going for just the pretty oh, shot cool. along the hill oh, there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, look at that. Lower right Bottom corner. Right. It is kind of crazy to think that we're dangling a 3,000 pound sled three kilometers below the seafloor, 10 meters from. I know, totally. <laughs> Without touching. Without touching. Not allowed to touch. No touching. Yeah. <laughs> I actually think we kind of come to the top of this sort of steeper bit here. I'll turn. My over. favorite terrain. Uh, we won't see it on this expedition, but 
Uh, it's when we, we start to get up into the extremely steep uh, reef, uh, carbonate cap and reef of these uh, shallow seamounts and uh, banks and atolls uh, in the Pacific remote islands. I love those like massive you know, cathedral carbonate formations, with yeah. all sorts of little animals inside all the pockets. And mm. you probably saw some in Helena Baker, right? Yeah, 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 it was incredible. Helena Baker has a ton of those. Those are amazing. It, uh, it also scares ROV pilots. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Fair. I can't imagine what you're talking. I can't imagine the. Where where do those kinds of environments? You know where you find the hurt garages. You know? Oh, the hurt garages, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you hope not. But yeah, the a lot of these remote Pacific islands that, you know, they'll come up kind of sloped, and then all of a sudden, the last uh, maybe 100 or 200 meters, they just go straight vertical where the, the live reef is up top. And uh, those are really, really amazing. Sometimes they can have immaculate uh, hanging coral gardens. But they're also very difficult to navigate around because have to make very deliberate maneuvers and have plans for what to do if the terrain starts to close <laughs> in around you. Yeah. Tent. Let's see what's happening here. Terrain-wise, I'm finding myself like wrapping around. Yeah. I just to keep the. I think the goal is to Argus follow. Is yeah, the terrain. Look at your sonar. So it goes, yeah, yeah. It goes oh, yeah. around like that. So you'll just sweep around. It's all good. Kind of follow that contour. Sometimes you can stick a depth in your mind, like what you want to sign a stick to, and then that way. So I was changing depth to see if I could just keep Argus the same distance from the wall. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty good now. I'm like 15 away. Yeah. I remember one of the first cruises I did when we were in the Caribbean was, uh, I think we talked about it earlier, we were at Kickham Jenny Volcano. And really, when you're in the, you were working like inside the crater. When you're in the crater, the currents weren't too bad. But there was an area just near there called Kickham Jack, which was just basically one of those giant rock features, just a super high, like <laughs> crazy thing with, Crazy currents all around it. Yeah. And this uh crevasse is pretty neat here. And we got on there we were able to get the ROV on to look at it once, which was the first time we tried, and we didn't really realize later how difficult it was. Um and we had some just amazing footage, but it was one of those times where we were pretty nervous and uh had her kind of almost in like a Elevator shaft kind of thing, looking at this climbing this crazy steep thing. There's some pretty extensive, like volcanic rock here. Lots of angular uh, material, as well as a lot of bumpy, lobey, so irregular shaped rocks. It does kind rocks. of come around a little. Do you want? Um, how about? Let's let's. Let's stick to the 70 um, and see what happens on the aggregate. Yeah, because 70 takes us sort of along but also up, right? Yeah, I yeah. let's see what happens on the aggregate. We might be in like just kind of a local feature here. It's just sort of changing direction. I'm going to come down a bit just so I can get back on the wall. See this? Another coral, too. Bathy pathies. There you go. Bathy pathies. Going to be out of a job soon. 
<laughs> Go for Zoom. Actually, we'll see. There's a very closely related species uh, as well um, called Alternatopathies. Go away. Which has a different branching um, pattern, but I'd say I would lean more to bathypathies on, on that one, but we'll have to take a look at the video again a little bit more closely. I think Alternatopathies is a, maybe a little bit shallower. Yeah, so this trend here was me actually just like coming upslope so that I could get in front of like stretched out perpendicular to the slope. Right, which gets so me I don't, in a safer spot for sure. Yeah, so yeah. I don't actually think that the the strike of the slope has changed at all. <coughs> sort of a trick of the light. But I, I could be wrong, so. Oh, I think happens. I think that's exactly right. Yeah. Sponge rubble, large sponge rubble. Anemone. Oh yeah, cute little one. Oh, yeah, that's a neat one. Totally translucent. Oh, I didn't even see this guy. The this is, is the tulip sponge again. Or spon oh, okay. Yeah, the tulipy sponge. There's no current in here. It's amazing. Yeah, it's just like floating so, there. So, so, so still. Yeah, that's surprising. Usually, we, in areas that are really absent of current, you won't find corals or sponges at all. But sponges do have a little bit of an ability to create their own current. Goes, go for Zoom. How do they create their own current? There are small, um, you know, cells inside the sponge that uh, be a flagellum that, you know, in unison, they can create a you know, small amount of current. That's really beautiful. Okay, go on. The stock is so crazy to see it. Like I know, it is really crazy. It's reaching out that far. I'm sure we have an idea on that somewhere. It's probably been collected before. Is it growing out that far, potentially trying to get into a more, like, currenty area, I would imagine. So Almost, get some yeah, food. certainly. Just yep. Kind of love that on these rock faces. You can really see sometimes the sponges and corals, like, horizontally growing out where there might be more food. Sure, lateral there. Yeah. Back up. Unk. It actually might be in the genus Hyalanema itself. Wow, this is really crazy terrain. Beautiful. If you weren't awake already, you are now. I'm awake. <laughs> yeah, I was Folks sitting back. Shore. What's that, Josh? I was sitting back, but not for the last little while. <laughs> Paying attention a little more now. Did you see that come up on me in the sonar? I had like when you bumped into it. Uh, uh, I was watching. I saw it come up there, but yeah, I didn't see it fast cool. enough. Um, and oh, I should have yeah, like because I, I just, saw it when I the just shadows. saw it from the shadow on Argus. Yeah, I just saw it from the shadows on Argus, and I wish like that didn't give me a uh, fast enough. You uh, turned pretty quick, like you kind of spun hard. And that kind of like, yeah. I turned to try and like yeah. Anyways, I should have seen it in the sonar, but I was looking at the wrong screen. It didn't give me a fast enough. All right. You're just a, you're a touch behind in the sense, like see how we're going like yeah. this way, okay. and now you're like behind Argus. Yeah, totally. Like okay, I'll catch up. Run a little bit. 
anywhere we're in a fine spot i'm not so i'm not following i'm not sticking argus on that heading we're headed anymore right? yeah totally you're following me following you around this is like a funny sort of it's, it's balance to strike between like trying to stay a little bit ahead but still trying to stay yep. between in the yep. argus and the wall keeping it safe keeping up it's, it's definitely the trickiest when you're running along steep contours and they're and they're undulating yeah and you're wanting to try and stick to it i find it's a little it can be disorientating or you yeah. don't even realize you're behind you're like oh hold on yeah. a sec I'm actually totally got to catch up i think like you say just knowing where your safe zone is in depth along the wall that allows argus to stay off the wall yep gotcha kind of the key. and after that it's kind of just yeah, you've got a nice distance off the wall right now. Yeah, no, this and is, we're the great. This water is, great. is so clear. But, I mean, that's the wild part. Like, Steve, I don't know if you, like, the water is so clear. There's not really any marine snow. Like, it's... Bridge, yeah. Huh? Yeah, I mean, that, that could be why we're not seeing a lot of stuff on the seafloor also. 30 meters. Yeah. Biology. Because I'm, like, 10 meters off the wall right now, which is crazy to be seeing yeah. this much. I will get in closer now that I'm sort of caught up a little bit here. Yeah, we are in a, an area of the ocean that is um, sometimes called oligotrophic. Um, that means that the surface waters are pretty nutrient poor um, and there's not a lot of productivity uh, going on compared to waters that were closer to the continents um, where you might have other kinds of nutrient inputs. And for that reason, there's not a huge amount of productivity. Um, we have longtime viewers that are listening back from when we were up in the coast of the West Coast last year. They might have seen some dives where you could barely see Hercules, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking off of uh, the Olympic coast uh, last year, we had some really dense um, marine snow uh, in the bottom there very strong currents. Uh, we also had pyrosome blooms over a few years. Oh, yeah. 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 So those are all animals that are feeding on that organic material in the surface water. And when they break down, they fall down to the seafloor. They get eaten, turn into marine snow themselves, or they just fall straight down to the bottom. Yeah, we, I've seen just like fields of those, like this, yes. just take over and like, whoa. Yeah. Like, flying through a snowstorm of a good example of what um, biologists and biogeochemists might call carbon export okay kind of taking carbon out of the surface ocean and sending it down beyond the surface mixed layer where it's kind of sequestered into the deep sea sonardine looks nice now yeah Trying to keep a mental note about the vessel's relationship to the ship. And the slope and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Go for zoom. Can you uh, go for Zoom? Yeah, this one's another colony of uh, of what? I can't tell. <laughs> Actually, I'm okay. starting to second guess myself. Some of the polyps are a little weird. Yeah, they they're sort of like all over the place. Strange orientation. Uh, I think I do th still think it's macrocalyx. Norella macrocalyx. Okay, go wide. We got an ID. Let's scram. Okay, we're 40 meters away from our... Um, oh, never mind. False. We are 50 meters away from our rock collection. Um, vertically? Yes. Okay. On the dot. 2932. So, Steve, a question for you about... Uh, if this area is oligotrophic, where is the sediment coming from? Is this 
from a long time ago that's just accumulated or what what's your guess on that the sediments here are, are um coming from the surface ocean actually it, it you know it's not like sa uh, sand or mud that we're finding down here it's largely uh small shells and tests of organisms um, that grow in the plankton they live in the plankton up in the, the surface ocean and then when they die their bodies tests fall down to the bottom and collect basically if you were to look at some of the sediment under a microscope you'd see it's made out of a tiny 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 um, round ball shaped uh, calcium carbonate tests um, with probably some other some other material in there as well um, perhaps from you know just bits of crust uh, occasionally or some other biogenic material like uh, barnacle shells or shells from stuff in, on the benthos here there also might be uh, a fair amount of organic material that just helps glue it all together. So it's a it's a mishmash of a lot of different things, but largely uh, from the surface ocean. Some uh, sometimes you get pteropod shells. These are uh, um, midwater. I think they're gastropods. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're snails. Yep. Little pteropods. Yep. So swimming. Snails basically they make a shell, and when they die, the shell falls down to the seafloor, collects, sometimes in rather large piles. Bridge now. Yeah, it's Thirty funny, meters zero seven zero. We often think of sediment as being, you know, sand or things like that, but it's really neat to see down here these different organisms that you pointed out, Steve. There eating it you know because it is all of this i mean nutrients yep. and food we've seen that with the sea cucumbers and other pops of color as we've gone through this dive thank yep. you gotta shift our preconceived ideas of sediment <laughs> yeah the you know the, there are um there is rather uh a transport mechanism to get continental sediment out to the middle of the ocean for example in the atlantic you have uh certain atmospheric winds that might transport Saharan dust across the Atlantic. Um, so you get might get you know, terrestrial dust and sediment carried aloft and then deposited over the ocean. Um, but you know those would be expected to be very, very fine grain yeah. sediments. Huh. And it would probably take a very long time to sink to the bottom. Go for Zoom. Wow, that's a pretty one. Yeah. It's so fine. This is a Chrysogorgid arctocoral, Pleurogorgia, or uh, that's its old name, uh, Remulogorgia. Recently revised earlier this year because of uh, new, uh, new records, new samples that had been collected over the past several years from this region. Okay, go away. And a uh, bamboo? And a, uh, yeah, maybe. I'd, can do a half zoom. I can probably get. Go for a half that zoom. Out easy. Yeah, it looks like a bamboo. Yep. Okay. Cool. Full wide. So a bridge is moving. Thank you, video. Mm -hmm. Having some trouble. Just off to north, but we've I seen a, a number of Pleurogorgia colonies, so they get quite deep. Soon. Uh, Remulogorgia colonies. Uh, earlier Steve, on I'm going to duck off of SPL for just a second. All right. But we'll be moving off the wall, which is good. Remula Gorgia, like with an R. Right? Yeah, Remula Gorgia, yeah. Remula Gorgia. It's really neat to hear about all these kind of like new classifications of corals. And yeah, it's just learning it's so been much. very interesting. So we had a we had a very successful, in my opinion, pretty successful campaign in in this area from 2015 to 2017 called Capstone. Uh, the campaign to address Pacific monument science, technology, and ocean needs. And uh, from 2017, uh, 2015 to 2017, the Okeanos Explorer was out here uh, with the ROV Deep Discoverer and uh, explored, did some of the first um, detailed characterizations of 
sites within the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument, the Papahanaumokuakea Monument, and then um, all the way out to the Marianas uh, Trench Marine National Monument. Uh, and then even as far south as American Samoa. And uh, during those explorations, samples were collected, and uh, some of those samples went into use uh, to better refine uh, or describe new species or refine relationships that had been only known from maybe a few samples, a few collections over a hundred years. And uh, they're still being used, in fact. Yeah, very valuable material. Same with anything that we collect out here. It's very valuable to get insight into the diversity of life down at 3,000 plus meters. Yeah, it's pretty incredible to see. I mean, it seems like through this ship and many other of these kind of exploration vessels, learning a lot of corals, but just in general, kind of from an education standpoint, we're hearing a lot more about the deep sea and these corals like in the news and across yeah. the globe, which is really exciting. Yeah. Because um, we're seeing so much neat stuff down here. Ooh, a little pop of color. Crinoid. Sea lily. Crinoid. Some viewers are asking why bamboo coral is called bamboo coral, and we'll probably get a better view of this again. We see bamboo coral a lot, but I think the reason is when we kind of zoom in, you can see the sectioning of it. So there's kind of these little segments. Uh, so it looks a lot like terrestrial bamboo, and it kind of grows up in those straight stalks. Um, so usually we just name things that way because they look like it, <laughs> yeah. simply enough. So you want to hold easy, station and let him change heading? Yeah, we uh, we have a tendency to name things after common land things or food, strangely <laughs> enough, at least on our watch. Mm -hmm. That's like my favorite thing about a lot of the seaweeds and kelps of really Pacific and Atlantic. A lot of them are named after food. It's like yeah. sea spaghetti, sea cauliflower. <laughs> I had uh, sea asparagus. No, sea, sea beans or what yeah. is something like that for the first time uh, a couple of weeks ago. Did you, ta you tasted it? Yeah. So salty and good? It is good, yeah. I have to try and look for that locally when I get home. Yeah, that's another big growing field, is learning more about seaweeds and kelp and eating them more and more, which is great. Okay, science, I'm back. Just a little reorganization of how the ship is moving. Um, so, Brzingid, maybe? Yeah. I Go for Zoom. What's on your mind, Kate? Oh, I scrolled out on the high pack screen and we're pretty close to our waypoint three. We can probably start heading, um, once you get settled out, heading upslope towards that. So, okay. Steve, if you're okay with ending our tr um, kind of lateral traverse and heading Go wide? Yeah, upslope about, again. About how far did we go on the bottom along that lateral? Ooh, great question. Um, 230 meters. Excellent. Yeah, I think we can go up and uh, just bear in mind we're going to be stopping in about 40 meters. Yes, that's true. For a rock sample. At 2932. <laughs> On the dot. <laughs> Let's track it. I think we should do that. Yeah. We'll get, if we have to come up and get like a midwater rock sample, we'll do it. <laughs> midwater rock. <laughs> you gotta set the bar high for the next watch. Yes. <laughs> Uh, somebody's definitely they, um, going to bring us some chocolate. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I have some of that. I meant to bring it up earlier. Maybe yeah, I saw you tonight. get I saw you get on the ship with a whole bunch of chocolate <laughs> yeah, and be like, it's the watch leader's job to bring the snacks. It's for you all. Uh, go for Zoom. I haven't opened it yet uh, because I typically bring out this, the sweets at night because it's a lot more difficult to keep awake and the sugar helps. Right, totally. But yeah, we'll we'll have that okay, at twelve o'clock midnight tonight. 
Excellent. Oh, especially we'll if we have water. a blue water watch, yeah. Ooh. We've Ooh. had a lot of rock star watches. It's about That's about time. True. Um, so the the earlier watch, I think it was the four to eight, um, broke off a pretty good sized chunk of rock. So they're 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 the kind to go after the the in place stuff. None of these loose rocks for them. We we <laughs> might have to do that too. Oh gosh. I'll give it a go at the uh, at the okay of the people who repair the arm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there's some yeah. good candidates from what I'm seeing okay. around here. Yeah. yeah. As not the person who has to repair the arm, I feel a little guilty when I damage it. Yeah, we try not to pry with it too much. But... Yeah, you can. Maybe you can help me figure out what the parameters for that are. Cause I haven't <laughs> broken off. Uh, I haven't broken off rock before. Um, so to go upslope, I want to go bearing 145. That sounds awesome. Let's do that. Great news. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, I really feel like we're on the same page here. <laughs> Bridge, Nav. Oh, there's a face in the rock over here. I see it, yeah. Kind of a big nose. Copy, oh. you want to keep, um, alter your hiding a little <laughs> bit more? Oh, cool. These rocks are kind of like clouds sometimes. You just start seeing Sounds good. Um, we'll stand by. He's got a good mustache, too. Yeah. Like a really good mustache. <laughs> There's okay. a... Um, Paul's going to update a little bit more on his heading, but we're staying pretty much on station. He's going to okay. move it up to 115. Okay. That sounds good. There's a very excellent XKCD cartoon. Okay. About, uh, all of you mean all XKCD cartoons? Yeah, this one's particularly good. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, about um, the types of life, you know, uh, how how we define life. Okay. And close to the bottom is uh, rock. Okay. But just above rock, in oh. in the direction of life, is things rocks that look like faces. <laughs> 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 That's amazing. <laughs> There's a, my favorite XKCD is a, is a guy sitting on a desert island and he's like with the, with the one lone palm tree, like looking off into the like wild blue uh, yonder being like, oh God, day 44, I haven't seen anything anywhere for miles. And then like, it's a cross section of the ocean and there's just like shipwrecks and sperm whales fighting, colossal squid and just like all this stuff going on down there. He's just got nothing. <laughs> really like that one. Very nice. Kind of hello sea material. Maybe nodules, but kind of looks like a debris field. I haven't been doing a great job of keeping Doppler lock. Can you give me a reset just so I can keep myself oriented? Yeah, let's see. I don't know how long it'll be useful, but. There we are. Great. That makes sense given our cliffiness. Yeah, totally. I love all these crinkly, like pillows and pillow lavas and stuff. Really neat. Yeah, this is a fun, fun area. I'm just looking for faces now. <laughs> <laughs> Can't rock. stop. I did not lateral into that rock that time. Thank you, sonar. <laughs> Got a viewer asking if this footage is live. And yes, it is. We are live streaming. Uh, everything you are watching is essentially in real time. Okay, what's what's? He's lined up. I'm gonna give him ten more seconds and then call up for a move. 
He doesn't call down first, but we are. Yep, exactly. He adjusted right here and then, yeah. He fell off about 20 meters. Bridge, Neff. Do you feel ready to make a move with our new heading? We can try, I guess that's all we can do. <laughs> False. Um, we're going to start moving upslope. Can you move bearing 145 for 30 meters? Thank you. You too. That is pretty much my heading. Just he's just pushing buttons. I mean, you know, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I mean, you know, at seventeen knots, if this thing's real, which I don't know that it actually is. Let, let me compare here. This thing's saying, uh, well, maybe a little higher than seventeen, but uh, and one and a half knots and the force is all aligned you should do, be able to do whatever the heck he wants to do like you know so something's not right another Romula gorgia colony and the gully so i should come up with it you don't have to do a full in zoom the half is fine yeah one's kind of oddly placed because usually you don't see them down in the bottom of the floor of a you know, canyon surrounded by two walls on either side. There, there are more corals, though, in this area, starting to pick them up. I suspect by the time we get them top of waypoint three proper, uh, it'll be pretty... Pretty interesting community. Romula Gorgia. Yeah. I'll put in the chat here. And then this this one coming up here is this one here is Norella. Norella, probably Norella macrocalyx there. That's the other one. Those are the two predominant species we've seen in this you know, kind of horizontal transect along the wall. And we're going to head up and see, hopefully, animals in greater density and maybe new animals I haven't seen yet. And a perfectly placed rock at 29.32 meters. <laughs> okay, awesome. We just got a question of what would be a really exciting find, which I think you kind of just answered. You know, maybe we'll see some new uh, corals or sponges, but also, I was going to say a midwater rock would be a really <laughs> exciting find. <laughs> yeah. But the I would say. And geological time scale. <laughs> there are floating rocks. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just stop pum there. Pumice and things like from volcanic uh, activity, rafts of pumice. Sometimes. Okay. Yeah, it's a good question. What an exciting find would be. I feel like the most exciting yes. finds are the things that are completely unexpected that we've yes, come I across would worry. on these Nautilus cruises. That's kind of the fun of an exploration vessel and going places that we've never been before. So even on this um, cruise right now and on this dive specifically, we're on a seamount that's been unnamed, Seamount G, um, that's never really been seen before visually. Um, 
so we never really know what we're going to see. We have ideas of um, what we're looking for here based on exploration and similar seamounts um, and some ideas about the corals and sponges, but we have, you know, new organisms or things that pop by or swim by all the time that are always exciting and fun. So I have this one set to six meters, so that'll kind of show you in tight what's right in front of you. Kind of smeary, but gives you an idea. Oh, if rocks coming down on ROVs was a bad thing? I just assumed the answer would be yes, so I wanted to confirm. <laughs> I think one of the best uh, rock samples I've seen from a hydrothermal vent was by accident that yeah, landed in the top of the bumper bar. Oh, huh? it really? The ropos. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> I've definitely up, we're seen... like, huh, there's a giant rock in the yeah. bumper bar. <laughs> I've certainly seen like a rock like tumbling onto the porch or a piece of a chimney or something tumbling onto yeah. the porch. I've sampled under things sometimes, occasionally. Mm. Yep. I would love to see some more critters. The rocks are good, though. Fridge, Nav. 30 meters, 145. So will that get us to our um, special sampling, midwater rock sampling zone? Slowly but surely. Excellent. We've really only been talking about this for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think Steve knew what he was doing when he said that. <laughs> it's the carrots. I uh, just have to go after the dangling carrot. I think you all think I'm joking, but there's literally a list here of very specific depth. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know... 2932 is literally written down. Yeah, okay. Yeah, pass it around. Here. Okay. I'll take pass it, it around. <laughs> Proof. <laughs> oh, yes, can confirm. <laughs> Negative 2932 meters. Okay. Oh, interesting. Z down coordinate system. Yes. Or Z up, I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to check too? <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's there. It's the proof is in the pudding. Oh, <laughs> I've, I've read the dive plan. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's written in pencil. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's in pencil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've read the dive plan. <laughs> Zing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one who printed it out and did free dives. <laughs> so uh, I think the author who did this is probably a approximate, but I think um, if we can do it literally. I think that's that's just the most precise. I think right? that's the dream. This is Precision science. Precision and accuracy. Yep. Maybe, both. maybe what we really should do is take the, the jaws of the arm and we'll scratch the depth into the outside <laughs> of the rock. <laughs> <laughs> Little survey mark. Uh, I've always wanted to try and write my name. No, I haven't. That sounds really hard. Yeah. What's the bias on the pressure sensor? For our depths? Oh, it's pretty, oh, I don't it's know. pretty accurate. So I'd have to look it up, but it's uh, feral scientific or pretty, pretty accurate depth sensors. Yep. The, the CTD one tends to vary as you go deeper. But yeah, the, they, they start out in agreement, and then as you go deeper, the, the CTD varies uh, from the ferro. Let's see, what do we got here? We got... CTD says 3009. Arrow uh, says 2963. So, a bit of variation there. Kate, do you think we'll get to the spot before our watch is over? Yes. Oh, wow. That's amazing news. We will not hand over this responsibility. <laughs> How could we trust anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> 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 All 
our temperatures are pretty consistent across three different yeah, sensors. Yeah, they've been really super solid, like as good as I've ever seen them. I've been wishing we were using the temp sensor because it can be, you know, temperamental, and it <laughs> isn't right now. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Go for Zoom. <laughs> A good Argus sometimes laughs at your jokes. Oh, that one's a crinoid, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. How can you tell the difference again? Uh, so the the small uh, the small Go ciri ahead. on the bottom uh -huh. are those arms, or uh, I guess you could call them legs that kind of wrap around things. Okay. And they percentages. Oh, uh, yeah, the percentage. Sometimes the crinoids have more arms uh, than the percentages. Varies, though. So. But the percentages don't have those uh, other extra appendages. Mm. Percentages use kind of these tube feet. Gotcha. To suction to the rock. Bridge, Nav. Can we move fifty meters one four five? Correct, five zero meters one four five. Got a couple of questions coming in just about life at sea. You people wondering, what do we eat uh, and who feeds us? We're lucky enough to have some chefs on board that uh, we have scheduled breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it's buffet style. So we've got lots of yummy things uh, cooked for us every day, ranging from you know fish and meats to salads, pastas, all sorts of things um, that we can choose between. Then in the afternoon, we get a little dessert snack, although I guess we typically miss it on this watch here. Um, but yeah, you'll often hear us talking about food in the control van and comparing organisms to food as well. And then we get freed off to a meal afterward. But yeah, we've got a, a crew of people that take care of us here on the ship, which is really great. And a few people asking about swells on the ship uh, and how bad it is on the top of the ship i would say it's not it has we've had some bigger water on this cruise um, but generally after about 24 hours of being on ship and in bigger water people adjust some people get more seasickness than others um, but your body adapts to the moving water but that's some of the fun of living on a ship yeah, if you want to know what the swell is like you can actually watch the argus screen Argus pretty much matches the ship movement Ooh, up and down. That's a good tip. This is so cool. Look at all this. These crazy big pillow explosion marks. Yeah, it's like getting really kind of bulbous. It's very cool. Uh, some of these things look like giant blasted open pillows, maybe. Not much here. Um, I mean, more than usual. Occasionally, we'll see coral colony every few meters or so. I think it's about time for our rock sample. Is there anything? <gasps> yeah, yeah. You have uh, five meters. Yeah, I'm gonna stop the ship. Yep. I don't know what we're Bridge, gonna find nah. here, but we'll see. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we might hold ship, please. We might have to resort to. Breaking something off. Uh, let's go check around over here. Maybe there's something. 
I don't know. It's two meters too deep, Steve. Ah. <laughs> well, we do. We do want to go a little more. Yeah, yeah we're, we're gonna, gonna have we're to gonna come keep up a swinging. Bit. We're gonna get, yeah. yeah. No, we're not gonna swing too bad. Oh, uh, we will a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Um. So I'll come up a little bit. Uh, or we could just go for it. I don't know. Well, the number to beat is uh, six meters, so we need to be within six meters of our target. Two nine three two is the target, right? Mm. Anything here look breakable? Not. That's Super. How? Really what's our yeah. size looking like? What What kind of size do you need for this sample? Um, you know, we want something right ten to fifteen centimeters minimum. Um, the bigger, the better, I guess, as long as it's not too big to fit in the box. Um, what boxes do we have? Oh, we have okay, I'm gonna come up plenty of large bit. and small boxes yeah, on the starboard side. A little bit. See, we got a little bit more to this swing, so I'm going to keep coming up. All right. We're not going to make our perfect number, but it does look like there's some rocks to be had around here. Yeah. yeah. Slime star. Be able to find, oh, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, might have to kind of work something off the, off the ledge there. That's some nice crusty stuff here. Um, might be able to take a look at. I'm going to circle sure. a few things. You tell me what. Okay. Looks I good think I'm going to be looking up here. Okay. The first one I was looking at is this, maybe. Maybe that that's breakable. They look pretty attached. How much? Yeah, that looks attached. How much force do they need? Maybe that one in the background. I think we're just going to have to try a few. Okay. I'm not optimistic about how loose some of this stuff is. Little guys loose. Yeah. Not not enough. How about this? No. Solid. I think we might have to try elsewhere. Okay. Unless we can try and break something off. I, you I use your judgment about. I don't see anything that's like yeah. positive, en positive enough to get the gripper around. Um, I'm happy to resettle a little bit just because there's a little bit more swing in Argus. Yep. Okay. I have to come straight up here. And it actually looks like it gets less steep right up above us. That might help. Perfect. Yeah. Ooh, that's 